Charisma Adams is the stylist fashionista behind the apparel and product brand Faith and Flyness. As a pastor who has devoted her life to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, Adam's specific style of ministry fuses faith, fashion, and entrepreneurship into an innovative presentation that attracts women from all walks of life. The Palm Beach Beat had the opportunity to sit down with Charisma Adams to better understand the woman and the mission behind the popular lifestyle brand. Well, my name is Charisma Adams and I am 39 years old. I am from West Palm Beach, Florida. I've been here pretty much all my life except for when I left and went to college and, you know, moved around a little bit. Um, I am a small business owner. I am a pastor and I am the founder of Faith of Flyness. I just felt like God was nudging me to step up in terms of my own faith, not necessarily the ministry, but my own faith, to study more, to read more, to draw closer into a relationship. So I really just started seeking more answers, you know, reading my Bible, studying, going to Bible study, getting more involved. And it was through that that I learned to hear the voice of God. And uh, when I started hearing his voice, I was like, uh, you're talking to me, uh, you know, because at that time I, I felt I was hearing him say, now that what I've taught to you, I want you to go and teach that to some other people. You know, and I, that's scary. That's scary for a 20-something year old young lady who still don't know if she want to do this or not. You know, that's scary, but that's kind of how it all started with me. I was in um, school, uh, I was in a um, ministry school probably about six years ago and one of the things is we were taking a class called the gifts and the callings and we were looking at our gifts, our spiritual gifts and we were trying to see now how did they relate and interact with our call, what has God called us to. So as we were doing this activity and actually it was our end of year project and our end of year project was really and it was a lot of different pieces to it. We were looking at our passions, we were looking at our experiences, our skill sets, our personalities all of these things and putting them together and really praying over that God what do you want me to do with this what are the group of people you specifically called me to with this skill set that you've given me because those whom he calls he's equipped so you've already equipped me for something so what have you called me to do with it and so it was through that process of this project that the shape of the ministry faith and flyness started coming together didn't have a name didn't really have a lot logo any you know real products or anything but it was just kind of okay this is the piece People group and the people group was actually the same people group that I was already a member of and had been through and it was young urban you know women who were trying to figure out this journey of faith uh, knowing that my faith doesn't look like my mother's faith my grandmother's faith um, but it is still very much a strong relationship with God is different but it doesn't mean that it's you know better or worse but it's just different so that's kind of how that came to be It's really about fusing that lifestyle of a, you know, being full of substance and being, being, being full of God's word, but not feeling like I got to be looking homely, homely and godly, you know, that don't necessarily mean that's synonymous, you know, but you have people that believe that. So it was just kind of fusing it together. You can still be fly. You can still look great. You can still, you know, love and indulge in some of these cultural things that we enjoy, but still have a heart, soul, passionately after God and wanting to please him and, you know, reach his people. People's perception of God, of church, of Jesus is relative to their experience. Just like people's perception when you say the word father or mother is relative to their experience. Um, even my own faith, I have always had a very challenging time acknowledging God as a father because I've had a really bad relationship with my earthly father. So I could never say our father because whenever I say that I just thought of God you're better than a father you know I could never equate him that way because my personal experience with my father was so bad and I believe that sometimes our personal experiences with church with church people with pastors with ministers because again I told you before we're imperfect people and I believe that some of our some of the things in our attempts to do good we have gone about it the wrong way and we've hurt people and we've damaged people's perception of God but I believe that that doesn't change who God is and and God is good even when we experience death and grief and loss and suffering God is still good and I just believe we all have to personally have that experience with him ourselves and I think in doing so we will all come to that same conclusion that Job did at the end of the day that God is good You know what, I think it's interesting because I think that through some time, you know, spirituality, 
uh, we've taken it and we've put it in, put it into this compartment and we've placed it here and then we have the rest of our life out here. And we said, this is what I do on Sunday. This is what I do at Bible study. But that's never been the, that's never been the plan. When God created Adam, he put him into business as soon as he created him. He says, here, this is the stuff I want you to oversee and I want you to manage and I want you to maintain. Also, I want you to be fruitful and multiply. I want you to bring increase of profit to my kingdom. That was business, 101 in the beginning, in the garden. But I think that we've taken business to say that, you know, making money is evil and believing God is good. We've segmented this stuff. That's not biblical. That ain't scriptural. And I believe if you are going to be strong in your faith, the Bible says study to show yourself approved. you got to study this thing for yourself because it's a lot of false doctrine. It's a lot of, you know false ideas riding around. You got to know. And when you begin to really pull that thing apart, God has never been outside of business or against business. It was in the early Bible. They went to God and consulted him. Should I plant these crops? Should I put water on? Should I move it? They consulted him about every aspect. That was business because when those crops grew, they sold them. That was commerce. But we've taken it and we're saying, you know, God is, you know, my faith and my business is over here. No, it is all one. We have one life and this one life is dedicated to God and that includes my business. That's my marriage. That's my kids, my personal life, my friendships. It is all, you know, one life under God. And the sooner we realize that, I think the more stronger our businesses will become. My core business in terms of who I am and as Faith and Flyness is to make disciple makers. And that's what the Bible has called us to do. And that is for me to take what I've learned of God and the Bible says commit that to other faithful people. So I tell other faithful people and gather them around and teach them what I've learned. And then they take that and then they have their own experience with God. And then they commit that to other people as well. Because that's just all I'm called to do. I do that through... Bible studies. Um, I do that through online teaching, podcasts, videos. Um, we do in-person small groups. Um, and then we have what we call day parties. Uh, so we have, you know, Christian day parties, women day parties, and they come and we have fun. We dance and we get henna tattoos and we have a speaker come and we shop and we do all the fun stuff because, again, God did not call us to have a boring life. He says, I want you to have life and have it more abundantly. We should be full, you know, when you're full of God's spirit, we should be full of happiness and full of joy. He wants us to enjoy this life. I wish somebody would have told me that I cannot do it all and I cannot have it all. Um, I think that there is a statement and we got books, oh, you can have it all and you can do it all. And I think as a woman who is also a wife, who is also a mother, who is also a business owner, a daughter, a sister, a cousin, a friend, and the list goes on and on and on. And I was under the assumption early on that I could do it all and I could balance it. That word balance is so false and it's so misleading. And as women, we try to do this balancing act of, you know, how much do I put over here? How much do I put over here? How much time do I spend doing this? But um, I do not believe in balance and I do not believe that you can balance. Um, I do not believe I've been called to balance because balance is giving equal weight to multiple things so that they stay in, you know, tandem one with another. I don't believe that my children and my family are equal weight with necessarily my business. I don't believe they're equal. I believe that there are some things that are more important and they weigh more and I should be given more attention to. And so I think that in that effort in the beginning for me to maintain this balance and I was, okay, I'm spending too much time at home. I got to work on my business more. I got to do this more. And I was doing that and I was crazy. I I almost lost my mind. I, for a little while, lost my family. My husband and I split up for a period of a year. I, my children was like, uh, my mom ain't never home because she working all the time. And it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy that I tried to do that. And I wish I had known that what I should have been doing is prioritizing and putting the bit balls in first. And the things that are the most important, the things that are, are at the core of who I am and what God has called me to do, putting those in first and paying attention to those first and then getting to the other things when I can. But making sure I stay focused on the God things and not just good things. There are tons of good things that I was involved in. Oh, that's a good thing. Oh, they want me to do that. That's so good. Oh, that helps them. That's good. And good things will definitely have you stretch super thin. But now I don't have a problem saying no because I'm focused on God things. I'm focused on only what God has called me to do. And there are amazing good things out there 
they're good things for me, but they're God things for somebody else. So somebody else has been called to do that thing, but it's just not me. So I think now I've learned the art of no, and I say it easy, easily. I'm fluent in it <laughs> these days. And I think my life is just so much better now. It's so much easier. Um, and I've learned to just focus on my focus. In five years, um, honestly, I can't see that far. Um, in terms, so I can tell you generally what I think, but what I'm learning is for me, it is literally, you know, cloud by day, fly by night. Like I'm literally day to day because I don't know. God has given me something new kind of in each season. So um, right now I am working on a devotional for new believers. It'll be out November 4th. It's called Premeditated. So you can look for that. Um, that is something that will be within the next five years. I know we're doing a product expansion for Faith and Flyness. We're bringing in some great new products. You can look for that. I know we will be doing more ministry uh, locally and as well we'll be doing some traveling. I know that that has already been laid out and doing Faith and Flyness in some other areas. Um, and I know I'm doing a co collaboration with another amazing young woman who is a believer who has a different audience and a different ministry but God has called us to come together for a particular project and we will be launching a spirit led woman in 2017 so you can look out for that um, but beyond that I really don't know because let me tell you every time I think that I got to figure it figured out and I got this plan that's what I said write your plans in pencil because I God is just blowing my mind and I think right now I'm in a space where I'm, I'm more open and I'm like okay before I was like like, I can't do that uh, you know what are they gonna say but you know now I'm just open and I'm just like you know uh hey okay God what's next what's the next adventure I said it last night one of my girlfriends was like okay this is done what's next I, said, I don't know I'm gonna pray wake up tomorrow I say okay God what's our next adventure you know so I'll just see so I don't know five years from now but I do know the next five months I've seen pretty clearly but we'll see to learn more about Charisma Adams and the Faith and Flyness brand, visit www.faithandflyness.com.